flow again. What do three little girls in blue and ten gentlemen from West Point share in common? It's their leading man and our special guest today. Please join us in welcoming the very popular and multi-talented George Montgomery. Montana. Grew up in Montana. That's right. Where in Montana? Uh, it was north of Great Falls, in and around Great Falls also, uh, for uh, the years that I went through high school. Uh -huh. and Russian roots. Fun. Come on, tell me right. about the Russian roots. Strong. Well, I don't know. Uh, I think we have a lot of Russian roots all over the country, but uh, uh, mine happened to be in Montana. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Fifteen children. Come yeah, on. I was the fifteenth one. Really? The yep. baby, but 15th. Look what came out. My God, you're so big. You were well, a big baby. Yes? Uh, yeah, I think I was 10 pounds and a uh, few ounces. Uh -huh. How did George Montgomery, you were an artist as a child? Well, I think we're all sort of artists. Uh, you know, you get a box of crayon and all of a sudden uh, you're uh, an artist. Uh -huh. And uh, the uh, pieces that I had done in the 30s, I happen to keep, mm -hmm. and uh, fortunately, because they're now at the uh, Autry Museum in the exhibit. Right, right. Yeah. First time on a horse, George. What was the first? Can you remember first the time on a on horse? A horse yeah. My God, that was. I think I was about maybe two years old. Two at years old. First time on a horse. Yeah. You loved it right from the beginning, right? Was that your love? Well, that was about our only means of transportation back in the days where uh, I was sort of raised, uh -huh. and uh, if you didn't get on a horse and stick to him, uh -huh. you'd either walk or uh, take the wagon. <laughs> so uh, it was uh, that period of time. Stuntman, come on, let's get back to Gene Autry at the Republic Studios or whatever. Well, no, the, the stuntman, uh, that was after I had uh, done the Lone Ranger. Oh, really? And, uh, you did the Lone Ranger yeah, first? Right series and uh, it was a serial right a serial right and uh, after I did the Lone Ranger then um, I was around Republic Studios for approximately eight nine months uh -huh. and during that time I was doubling John Wayne and some of the other larger stars uh -huh. I mean large in stature not uh -huh. in uh -huh. um, you were doubling for John Wayne yeah God. and um, there were other people, Preston Foster and some of the others that uh -huh. I doubled for. Uh -huh. John Wayne, first time you met him, what kind of guy was he, George? Can you remember? Well, at the time, you know, uh, you really you were young then. Both yeah, of you. you didn't pay much attention because they were more or less uh, people that were working in the same industry with you. And, right. uh, uh, you know, 20, 30 years later, all of a sudden you say, God, I wish I'd, you know, uh, gotten to know these people a little bit better, uh -huh. uh, whether it be the Clark Gables uh, that we uh, knew very well. They lived near uh, where Don and I uh, had the house in Encino, uh -huh. and uh, Gable was a very close friend of ours, but you never thought of them as anything out of the ordinary. They uh -huh. were just uh, people. Uh -huh. So, uh, Republic Studios, they signed uh, you up. You were there. O only, uh, only, only for the Lone Ranger. That's it, strictly? Yeah. Right. Oh, I thought they signed you up. But you did a lot of westerns, though, after the No, I, no? I did some uh, things with Gene Autry. And, uh, you and Gene were I, very close. He had a lot to do with your career, though. He did. He did? I didn't know that. No, I heard. No, uh, no as a matter of fact, uh, there was a director out there uh, that was just marvelous. And uh, every time... Uh, Gene was doing a film or something, he'd say, George, I'll tell you what, I can get you on a Gene Autry film, but you have to stand back of a horse or at least, you know, 15 uh -huh. feet away from Gene because uh -huh. I was about six, eight inches taller than Gene. Right. It didn't look too good. 20th Century Fox, what happened after that? You went to 20th a lot. You did a lot of well, films at 20th. Well, I signed a contract at 20th, yeah. 
back well, in 1938. 38. And, uh, first film, 20th. Do you remember? Um, I think the first one was uh, Stardust. Stardust with, with Linda uh, Darnell. Right. God, what a great actress she was. I loved Wasn't her. Wasn't she nice? Yes, I used to go, I used to be around that lot a lot, and I used to see her a lot. Matter of fact, mm. I was on the lot when she did Forever Amber with Cornell. That was a, yeah, that was a great movie. Yes. Yeah. Linda Darnell, working with her. Any fond memories working with her, George? I mean, well, she, you know, I, I don't think you really set yourself into thinking about fond memories with these people because uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, things uh, that uh, Zanuck set up, such right, as right. personal appearances and that. And uh, you never thought of them as anything other than uh, people. Just getting up to work, doing yeah. your job. Cesar Romero, you and very close, oh, Cesar and you. Yeah, God, it's another 20th Century Fox. Yeah. Cecil Kidd and the Lady. Come on, that was a fun uh, movie. That was probably the very first part that I had uh, had of any uh, sort of size. Uh -huh. And uh, Cisco Kid and the Lady was probably the second or so movie that I had done there. Right. Shirley Temple, worked with Shirley? Young People, yeah. Jack Oakey, great. Oh, was great he guy. wonderful. Wasn't he great? He must have been fun. Marvelous. Shirley Temple, was she, what was her magic as a child? Because you did one, I remember you did one, oh, I don't know, several, but go ahead, this trial. You worked with several trials, but this well, particular. Shirley was one of a kind, and uh, there again, you know, you worked with these people, but uh, you didn't think of them as the great uh, star or uh -huh. whatever they are uh -huh. at the time. And uh, this was the uh, last film that Shirley had done uh -huh. in her sort of adolescent uh, period. Uh -huh. And... Uh, then she went on to uh, some John Ford movies, and uh, you work with Jeannie, Jean Turney, Crane, Jeannie Jean Crane, Turney. Jean yeah. Turney. Yeah, all these great ladies at Twentieth. Tell me about Jean Turney. I she just died. Matter of fact, we just lost her. Uh, yeah, Jean was a beautiful uh, young lady, a great actress, and uh, I was lucky enough to work in a film. Uh, called Ten Gentlemen for, no, that was another one, China Girl. China Girl. China Girl she, with yeah. Jean. Yeah. Yeah. She was a uh, lovely person. Shame that um, uh, I think uh, she had some she illness problems. or something yes, there uh -huh. for a while. How did you meet this great lady, great singer, Dinah Shore? You two got uh, married, fell in love, got married, George. Tell me. How did you meet? Well, Dinah? it was one of those things, uh, Skip. Like just what? Just happens, you know. I mean, I noticed it. No, before. Dinah and I met at the uh, Hollywood Canteen oh. during the war, uh -huh. and uh, she was one of the entertainers there, and I was sort of a busboy. Uh, as an and, actor, uh, right, right. Yeah, Dinah was uh, singing at the time uh, in one of the uh, uh, one of our first meetings, and. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we sort of hit it off. Got married yeah. right away, was it? No, it was. Um, studio one. Well, did studio did upset? Did you upset the studio for getting married like that at the time? Because you were oh, a I big think, leading man, George. Yeah, I think it raised heck with them. Yeah. They didn't want you to get married because they wanted you well, to be. Well, I think it's the same way today. Today, you know, you yeah. Get, uh, personality that uh, they sort of uh, nurture and uh -huh. and build up, and all of a sudden uh, he or she gets married. Right, and, uh, exactly. It's. You had a child. Kind of rough. You had a lovely child. Missy? Right. Missy? That's right. Melissa. Yeah. Melissa? Mm -hmm. Tell me about her. Now, she's still, how old is she now, George? Uh, Melissa is in her 40s, early 40s. Uh -huh. and, uh, is she in the business? Three grandchildren, beautiful children. Uh -huh. No, uh -huh. I see. Ginger Rogers and you. Roxy Hart, come on. What a great movie that was. Tell me about Ginger Rogers and George Montgomery. Well, there you, again, skip. The there's another love affair. You swept Hollywood by. Go ahead. Uh, if you can share it. If you don't want to talk about this, okay. No, no, no. It's fine. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we got Dinah ahead of Ginger because Ginger was ahead of Dinah. I know. Well, I do it. I, re, uh, I, go, I carry on a little. <laughs> mess it up. Huh? I know. That's okay. Uh, no, Ginger, uh, I'd met her uh, sort of early in my career at Fox, uh -huh. and uh, we went together for quite some time. Did you? Yeah. Good and, lady. Uh, Beautiful lady, right? Uh -huh. And uh, uh, 
I did uh, Roxy Hart with her, as you right, just said, right. and uh, Adolf Manju. What a great actor uh, he was. Yeah, Must great, be great. Yeah. We don't have stars like that today, George. When you turn on the TV, what do you think about those kind of actors today? Tell well, me. I think they're great. I, I think they are. They're still. Just you, you do think they're great. Right. Okay. Oh, you can take some of these young uh, kids that are sort of uh, getting up in the business, and they are fantastic. Uh, I think they have much more training uh -huh. than uh, we did back in my days. You didn't? Did you study acting at all, George? No, George, just a natural. George Montgomery, natural, like John Wayne was natural. Would you well, say I that? No, I. Uh, I John Wayne never studied. I was fortunate, really. And I want to thank all the fans throughout the world because, you know, if it weren't for the fans of that period or of this period, right? Um, I don't think there'd be any stars at all, you know, uh, because the fans make the people. And uh, it was just great that uh, uh, I happened to be one of the personalities that they latched onto. Uh huh. Orchestra's wives. Len Barry. Oh, I love that lady. I just thought she was a yeah, wonderful was, lady. Uh, Len Barry. Glenn Miller. That was. Uh, Glenn Mary's. Uh, that yeah. was Glenn Merrill, uh, Miller, right? Yeah. Or Betty Grable was in that. Who was in that? Um, oh, that was. Uh, Orchestra's wives was. Uh, um, oh God. Yeah. I can't. Anne Rutherford. Anne Rutherford. Right. Right. Great. Good movie. Yeah, that's. Uh, that Did you learn to play an instrument in that? Well, I played the trumpet in it, but I, I don't think I could have gotten paid to play the trumpet any place but in the movie. Did anyone teach you how to do it or anything like that? George? Oh, yeah. You had, uh, I think it was uh, Billy May. Oh, he should. Yeah, he was uh, the uh -huh. arranger for uh -huh. uh, Glenn at the time. Uh -huh. Did you enjoy <coughs> doing that film? Because that, that was a good movie, Artists and Wives. It was yeah. a very fun Turned movie. Turned out very well. You did some interesting movies from westerns, from... Uh, all kinds of films you did. I mean, George Montgomery liked to do variety of, not just because you love westerns. Is that your first love? Would well, you say? I, I think uh, Skip it wasn't uh, my sort of choice. I was put into these various movies by Sanic yes. or the producers that uh, right. wanted me in the uh, films, and I was very lucky to have uh, been selected in some of these movies because. I know uh, at the time I was doing uh, Ten Gentlemen from West Point, uh, there was rumbling around that Hank Fonda wanted to do the film very, uh -huh. very much. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I guess I was what they call hot at the time. Yes. And so um, I was chosen to do the movie. You certainly did, and it was great. Betty Grable, love that lady. She was the, king, the queen of 20th. Great uh, there's lady. No, there's no doubt there that she was, uh, she was probably... Coney Island, you did a movie with her. It was a great film, wonderful movie. Must have been fun with you working with that. Yeah, Coney I Island. hear it's still running around, and uh, uh -huh. I'd love to see it one of these days. You haven't seen it? George Montgomery uh, not has... In the, not <laughs> in the last few years, no. How many films has George Montgomery have made, would you say? Uh, 87. 87 films. Yeah. Have you seen them all, would you say? Um, I would say I saw about half of them, and you don't like certainly, to see them. no, I, I uh, like to see them. The only thing is that uh, in recent years you just don't see the uh, film sometimes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But during the uh, Fox days, naturally we had the big premieres at uh, Grandma's Chinese, uh -huh. and uh, that was part of the ritual. You you went to the. Uh, Did you go out a lot in areas. clubs? You were out. I used to say, I remember when I was a child. I used to turn the movie magazines. And you were out all the time with all beautiful ladies, well, George Montgomery. All the time, you yeah. were, yeah, you were one of the prince of Hollywood at the time. You well, were out. Well, nice to hear. But you were in uh, McCombs, Cyril's, all these clubs. You were always out in these wonderful. Did the studio force you to do that, or did you have? No. Um, no. You just did it. You just did it. Oh. I see. Dorothy Lamore, Lula Bell. Uh, Dorothy was a marvelous uh, lady. Uh, had done many. Uh, uh, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, uh, Road Pictures. And right. I did two films with her, Lula Bell and uh, Girl from Manhattan. Uh -huh. And uh, Charles Lawton was in uh, Girl from Manhattan. And what kind of guy was Charles Lawton? Oh, he was great. Fantastic actor. And uh, I was lucky to... Uh, You've worked with the people. best.
the best. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back in your career. You, looking back, George Montgomery, you have worked with the best of actors and best actresses, the most beautiful ladies in the world. I was lucky. You use that word lucky. Well, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of that is luck, uh -huh. really, being in the right place at the right time. And, uh, then, George Montgomery, yeah. artist. You start to paint, you start to carve, you start to do woodwork. That was another love. You, what happened? Tell me about that. What was your period? Well, I, I think uh, uh, all of that came about, uh, like the architecture and the uh, furniture and stuff. Right. Uh, I'm the kind of person that says, well, if somebody else can do it, I can do it. Right. And uh, that's the way it started with my architecture, uh, building about a dozen homes that are now in the several million dollar sort of range. Right. And uh, from homes and uh, started making some furniture for the house. Right. And friends came around and said, that's exactly what I'd, I've been looking for. So uh -huh. uh, the next thing I knew, I was doing furniture for friends of mine. Beautiful chairs, beautiful tables. Mm. I mean, your tables are just incredible the woodwork of the tables. How long does it take you to do a, a regular table that I saw today at the Gene Autry thing, one of those tables? Well, that it is depends incredible. On the, it depends on the table and depends on the various other things right. that go with it. Uh -huh. But uh, I, as you just mentioned, uh, at the Gene Autry, I think I have, oh, about four sets of very sort of uh, unique pieces. Right. Hanging table. Uh -huh. And... Uh, the Queen Anne set that I made for uh, Harry Carl and Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds, and, uh, uh huh? Yeah. And that's a nice set. And it's over there, and uh, some pine. Uh, so your, s your work start with the stars and the celebrities. That's when you start. Yeah. The word got out. Is that what happened, Outer George? In, I don't know. <laughs> the woodwork is, is incredible. You enjoy well, the doing. The hobby that uh, went along for a few years. Start. But sculpturing, what happened with that, the bronze? 1974 it started, or what, George? Uh, started yeah. doing this wonderful work, the bronze. Well, I've, uh, I've sort of had a desire to uh, get into the art field. And uh, uh, sculpture just happened to uh, step in to the area of uh -huh. uh, sort of the artistic area. I'm looking right now at the table here, and this is you. Is that right? So let's look at it. Well, no, that's the Hollywood Westerner Hall of Fame trophy that I created. You created uh, several years ago f to present to the various actors that would be uh, selected right. for the uh, Hall of Fame. Right. It's called the President Reagan Award. Uh huh. Um, he gave me permission to uh, uh -huh. title it as the President Reagan Award, and... Uh, Can we get back to this? I'd like to see this. Pres yeah, is this, this President is Reagan right over here? Let's see. Right here? That's it, huh? It's beautiful. Do you see it all right there? Did he have to say, did you, did he send, how did you get that, capture that? Did he sit on the horse oh, for no, you, or uh, you just, just get a picture, uh, or? Put it together. Put it together, all in your mind? Right. The detail, the look at the detail of this work. How long does it take you to do something like that, Joe? Well, this particular piece, uh, I think I worked on about <coughs> about a year, and um, uh, when I finally got to where I sort of thought it was a pretty good likeness, I uh, uh -huh. what uh, is your is that one of your favorites? Would you say? Uh, or do you no, have? I think there are an awful lot of a lot of favorites. But you know what I really like? One is your paintings of the uh, jungle. The African jungle. You were. Uh, you lived in Africa. No, no, I, I didn't do that. That was a David Shepherd. Painting. Was that a David Shepherd yeah. painting? Of the elephants. Of the elephants. Yeah. Forgive no, me. No, that's. Uh, I wish Wait, I did. Wait. Tell do me that. about you living in Africa. You did live in Africa. Well, I was there for two years working uh, with 20th Century Fox. Right. As a, uh, a co-production uh, sort of associate. Right. And so you and and you paint it. You start painting there. Uh, no, no. You didn't do any I, painting I there? Just, uh, trying to finish off the films that, that we were doing there. I see. When did George Montgomery start painting on, on the canvases? Well, I think that probably started out at uh, the ripe old age of four or five. Four or five. With my crayons. Uh -huh. 
but I've never done anything that uh, was very major I see. up till 80, 1980. 1980. Yeah. This, this is, book is incredible. You got a book out right now. This is called The, the Years of George Montgomery. Right. And it's all about your sculpturing, your life, your films, your l of your uh, tremendous book. The, uh, yeah, the book has uh, my art collection. Your art and, collection uh, in it? It's just yeah, incredible. The movie synopsis. Uh huh. Uh, my sculpture, furniture, uh -huh. architecture, and um, just beautiful. just about everything I've done. Uh, you know what I loved? Childhood. I love the custard. The la the custard thing I saw this morning. The, the custard of Cus what? Custard final moments. Custard final moments. Custards. Custards. Yeah. It's absolutely great. Thank you. Tell me about that. How long did that take you to do? That's a lot of detail work, George. Well, there are 12 horses and uh, 15 figures in that piece. Uh-huh. And uh, I must say I, I didn't keep time, but I think it was about a year that uh, took me to do that. Oh, it took a year. You're enjoying, looking back, did you say George Montgomery's had a good time? Because well, I don't know if I'd want to trade it with uh, anyone else's time. Uh -huh. So you've had a good time in that your life. That was good. Yeah. Been married how many times? Once. Just once. Right. Just once. George Montgomery's only been married once. That's right. Now, why did I ever think is you're single now? Right. Right. And you keep yourself very busy. You're always working constantly. Well, I'm lucky. I uh, did a couple pictures in Yugoslavia recently and uh -huh. one in Russia. Uh -huh. And uh, they were both great trips. And uh, So you still keep working well, in films, in television. Only you if had a I series. like the location. Now, it's, you know, it's not for... Uh, I'm certainly not going to get an Academy Award uh, role or anything that would be... Uh, uh -huh. uh, something that uh, would bring me back into the foreground. Uh, but uh, the trips are great, and uh, going to Russia was a marvelous experience, mm -hmm. as were uh, the trips to Yugoslavia. And George Montgomery, writing a book about your life? About your life. Are you going to write a book, uh, or are you? Because well, you've I, had, I don't think you've so, had, no. you had a fantastic life. You have a fantastic life. Still is fantastic because you are, your stuff right now is at the Gene Autry Museum. Yeah, that's right the, at this uh, moment yeah, as we're talking. It is incredible. The the people are just hearing about it. They are going. Well, it's, I think it's a very unique show. It does have, it has the furniture, it has the architectural right. sort of uh, areas with. Uh, my hanging table, which is on exhibit there, and it uh, it covers a gamut of about 50 years of my life, and uh, uh, I think that's a unique part of the exhibit, along with uh, uh, things that'll never be on exhibit in right. another museum because no one else has sort of those areas to uh, mm -hmm. dig into. What time of the day does George Montgomery? get up in the morning? You must get up very early. Well, I wake up the chickens. Yeah, I figured, and that's about 5 o'clock. See, I figure you did, because you work so hard. People that are thriving, working, and you must be very spiritual, because you're right I'm to the earth spirit. there. You're right there to the earth. You love outdoors. You love that earthy feeling. Is that right, George? Uh, yeah, I like the outdoors. Right. And how about Reagan? Are you close with Reagan? Uh, yeah, I have a What buddy. kind of a guy is... I'm a little upset with him because of the homeless in the world. I just blame it on him, but that's beside the point. I, I, I just... Um, I don't think we can blame much on Reagan or... Oh, yes, we can, George. No. He shut the mental institutions down, but no, that's well, okay. Well, I, all right, so he might have done that, but then <laughs> the great things that he has done... I understand that. And uh, I think if it weren't for Reagan, we'd be in one heck of a fix... Okay. In the Gulf War and some of these other situations. That, so you uh, are uh, tight with Reagan and well, close with him. No, I, I, mean, I just feel you that, uh, you know, he's a good man, and I think we'll all recognize uh, his greatness eventually. Uh -huh. But uh, At now I'm I a, we're a little upset with him, yeah, I think anyway. Even the Russian uh, situation, if it weren't for Reagan, uh 
uh -huh. I think in the arms build up I don't think we could have gotten where we are today with, uh -huh. uh, with Russia you're Russian you know your uh, Russian roots tell me about if I were what, Greek I'd say that uh, I understand that but you know what's happening in Russia I'm a little worried about I'll be very honest with you well I don't know I'm a little lot concerned about, about we're you know yeah and I'm concerned what's happening in America today. well look what's happening in Germany well. look what's happened with uh, the automobile business that's sad you know now. The, the don't support it, well, Americans don't support our own yeah, people well you yeah. know the the people that are being fired at General Motors uh -huh. at uh, Chrysler at Ford uh -huh. and all those you know they're driving around in foreign cars they're driving around in Japanese made cars and they're saying geez I wonder why we're laid off mm -hmm. you know I think it's ridiculous so George Montgomery does have compassion I see it well you do I, have compassion you are concerned of, of something else in life than just... I think I'm concerned for the United States and, uh, you know, uh, we're going I'm to... I'm glad to see that, George. Hitting quite a, quite a low point in, uh, in the 200... I want to get back to one of the Hollywood's great beauties, Lana Turner. Tell me about Lana Turner. I well, got Lana back. Turner... She's such a great lady. I yeah. love her. Tell me about her, George. The days that you were out with her. The days you guys went out there. My God, can we remember that far back? Oh, come yeah, on, George come Montgomery. On. It was great. No, it, at the time, they were just marvelous people, and Lana was uh, one of the people that I happened to go out with several oh. times. What a good-looking guy you were. Tall, handsome, good-looking. Um, How do I look? You look great. You're still Thank handsome you. and good-looking. Good God. Yeah. What do you think of yeah. Hollywood today, George, looking back? What do you think of it today? Well, I, I, I mean, Hollywood Boulevard. Mean Hollywood proper. Or that's property of Hollywood. I know you're living Boulevard of bubble gum, and that's all on the sidewalks. <laughs> no, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a pity, but, uh, you know, everything changes, uh -huh. and you're certainly not going to uh, bring the life back into Hollywood Boulevard that uh, we had had you know, 40, 50 years ago. No, we won't, not at all. Would you tell some young people out there how to prepare themselves with, if they want to come to Hollywood, George, what kind of advice would you give the youngsters if they want to become actors or like you did when you came from Montana? What would you say? Well, I think the periods of time were completely different than uh, today. I think uh, the uh, thing I'd like to sort of instill in the minds of the young kids, right. and that is go to school, First, and, get your uh, education. keep your nose clean. Stay away from drugs because there's no one that's ever succeeded that uh, has been on drugs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, the kids that start out with the innocent drug, smoking. Right. And the, uh, that's a drug, let's face it. Mm -hmm. And from there, it uh, goes into other areas. And uh, mm -hmm. um, it's too bad that people, especially the young ones, uh, doesn't, uh, don't realize mm -hmm. that uh, smoking is, uh, is bad. How about Dinah Shore? She ever bought your tables or some of your stuff, Dinah? Did she ever come oh in? Oh, yeah, she has. She uh, has some things from you? Yeah. You're, are you still close to see oh, her? Yeah. You're still close. Right. And you s she still sees the daughter and everyone? You're all very oh, yeah, close, tight Very still? close. Matter of fact, we're having Christmas dinner there. And really? Yeah. How nice. So Dinah and George Montgomery are still close.